And knowing you were going to be on the show today, Lance, you watched Dynamite. And uh, what did you think of this show? I, I was glad. I, I've already listened to the Brian and Vinny show, and I'm glad that he, Vinny and I were on the same page. Well, I will How did preface, you pull that off? Well, I haven't got through it all yet. I see. I will preface by saying nothing was nearly as bad, and the show was not dumb. But it had all of the fingerprints of what I don't like about a Vince Russo show on this show. It had the comedy wackiness of MJF and Adam Cole, which if it works for their fan base, Grace, it doesn't for me. It felt like it should have been a segment on Camp WWF with the cartoons and kids playing. It had the, I will address the smart mark internet fans with a bit, which Russo always did with the uh, Tony Khan segment. It had just the cluster fest, I will abrupt. Uh, adjust my language, my, the Cluster Fest match uh, with ridiculous rules with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And again, at least it generated money for Maui. You got to give Tony kudos for that. But And then it had run-ins and attacks in every single segment, it would seem. And even the exact same tease in the Adam Cole MJF, where Adam Cole stood behind him, set for the super kick. And when he turned around, he just stood up and Played it off like, no, we're good. And then in the main event, the F FTR guys did the exact same thing with the Shatter Machine behind the Bucks, doing the exact same tease and angle in two segments on the same show. I thought the show was busy, frantic, and I could remember very little by the end. But again, any individual thing other than the MJF comedy stuff with the completely out-of-date stereotype, ha-ha-ha, crikey kangaroos, and let's go to Outback. Like, that I hated. It was just dumb, childish comedy, in my opinion. But if it works and pulls ratings, by all means. Like, none of the segments other than those two were bad. And if you looked at them individually, you could even say they were all good. It's like, oh, hot angle. They got, you know, this across for Wembley, the... the but it's just when there is an angle in every single segment, my brain starts to go numb. And when the angles are almost all the same of just guys attacking and then having the challenge, and it's like, that's Wembley. It's like, okay, I did, did you not realize Wembley was in a week? Uh, apparently not. So I thought it was rushed, crowded, and frantic. But yeah, in no way was it a bad show or a dumb show it was just a hectically busy frantic show yeah i um like it's weird it was it was one of those shows that man i watched it and it's like i'm watching because i watch on delay and so i hear all sorts of things and then you know i i heard very very mixed reviews for this show and i heard a lot of negative reviews for the show and so i go to watch the show and, like, as the show is going on, it's like, I'm wondering, why do people hate this show so much? Like, the Orange Cassie wheeler Utah match is good, and, you know, I'm just going through all the segments individually as they happen, and, you know, I'm... But then you start to look at the overall picture, and you start to see, okay, well, I mean, aside from... I mean, and I brought it up to Dave last night, the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre death match. Mm -hmm. I get it. They, they paid you $100,000 or whatever, and you're going to help them promote this video game. And so you're going to do a Texas Chainsaw Massacre death match. And all the money's going to Maui. That's great. Like, I got no problem with that. Like, the point here is to make money and you got a sponsor and you want good sponsors and you're donating all the money to good cause. But like I asked Dave, it was the same thing with that zombie match with The Miz. It's like, why does it have to be horrible? Like, <laughs> I mean, there's got to be something that you can do with a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sponsorship that isn't that. Like, there has to be. What was the what was the uh, Miz match? It was like a Living Dead movie or something like that. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it was a zombie apocalypse. Uh, zombie movie, apocalypse okay. or whatever. It's like, okay, we're gonna do a movie built around that. Do you have to have zombies eating the Miz? Like, there's no other thing that you can come up with. Or the other the other one in WWE. Remember the egg. Remember that golden egg? Mm -hmm. It's like, that was some sponsorship thing. It's like, you can't come up with anything better than Vince has a golden egg and then whatever that's stupid. So anyway, 
It didn't have to be bad, is my point. Like, you could have come up with something that wasn't straight out of the asylum. But anyway, other than that, it's like, looking at each of these segments in a vacuum, it's like, you know, I can talk about this or that or whatever, but in general, it's like, there was nothing wrong with most of the segments in a vacuum. But then when you look at it all as one big, you know, shebang... I mean, I don't think that the main event angle when the Young Bucks get jumped should cause me to laugh, but it did because it was so ridiculous that it was the seventh attack, seventh on one show, which then gets you thinking about how, well, what did we talk about? You know, for weeks, it was like, are we ever going to talk about Wembley? CM Punk on Collision even did a promo and he goes, no one seems to be talking about this but me, but we have a show called Wembley coming up. And it's like, yeah. And then, you know, there's the defense of, well, you know, they always build up things late and it works out fine. And they already sold all the tickets. And it's like, I understand that. I do understand that they've sold a bunch of tickets. I do understand it's going to be fine. But what I'm pointing out is, you know, if you build it up a little bit earlier, you don't have to do seven angles on a single episode of Dynamite. You can space it out. And And then each of them can have more... Uh, impact because you're not doing seven of the same angle on one show and i think it does probably better in ratings if when you watch the weekly show it feels like you're on a journey to a destination and you can see the steps along the way rather than just watching weekly where there's oh this is a match this is a match this is a match and it they're good but they don't build anything and then the last week it's like nine angles and you're building to the show it's like oh okay It's like, I think a more gradual build that starts making you more excited. And I do think it's nice when you can, because I always like this as a fan, because all fans fantasy book, that you can see the angles and the stories developing and you start drawing, oh man, this is going to be the match at Wembley. And then when it's announced, you feel smart and rewarded for paying attention and watching the show where I feel Tony occasionally falls into the trap of there's no inclination whatsoever, so everybody just books the, oh, we'll get Osprey and Kenny, and it's like, well, that's not what you're getting now. You're getting two other things. Both those two other things will be great, but you're disappointed because they're not what you had planned, and I think a more gradual build would help everybody. Well, you know, there are people here saying they have been building the show. They have been building the show. Well, yeah, in some ways they have, okay? But you did a show last night where you shot seven angles for the show and i have said this for every promotion out there okay sometimes you don't need to do an angle on a show there's there were different shows to shoot these seven attacks there have been many weeks they could have shot these seven attacks you didn't need it all on one show and i've actually been very very critical of wwe sometimes because what they'll do is they have the match the match has been built up and now We all know what it is, and we all know what's going on. Okay, well, we don't need to shoot an extra angle on this last show. You don't need it. You do it because you feel like you need to shoot an angle or a brawl or whatever, and uh, and that's that. And then um, DJ here says, how long has a Jericho angle been building, Brian? Well, that depends. You could say that they've been building that up for four or five weeks, but Will Ospreay... He showed up last night for an attack, okay? And a lot of people, when it was over, they were like, Will Ospreay? Like, what? So, yeah, you built it up, but boom. Will Ospreay was another of seven guys running in for an attack. And, yeah, they've been building up something with Don and Jericho, but Will Ospreay was not any part of this until last night when he ran in. So it depends on what you consider built up. Some people will say they've been building it up. Other people are watching the show, and they say there's been no build-up to this stuff. So and if he listened to what I just said, the build-up needs to be such that you start putting the matches together before they are announced so that you are re- rewarded for paying attention and you feel smart. You couldn't book in your mind, it's like, oh, this is building to Osprey and Jericho because you just knew there was a story between Jericho and Dawn, and that's fine for that story. If you have to do that with that story, you then need to build the other matches in a different manner so that you know the other matches are coming. 
And the other thing here is, listen, you could sit here and say, Chris Jericho and uh, and Will Ospreay has been built up for three years because they were going to feud, and then there was a pandemic, and then the match got canceled, and then they were both in different places, but now they're finally going to wrestle. So it's you could say that if you wanted to. It's been no, built up can't. for three years. No, you can't. But you also have to understand that a lot of fans are going to watch the show, and Will Ospreay attacking Chris Jericho... Uh, a week, well, according to uh, Sting, nine days before Wembley, some fans are not going to see that as built. It's the exact same thing with FTR and the Young Bucks. Yes, they had two matches. FTR won one match. The Bucks won the other match. They have been on different shows. They have not interacted in any way. And then, last week or whatever, FTR says, we want the Young Bucks at Wembley. So if you want to, you can say, well, man, that thing's been built up for like two years now. You could say that well, if you, you wanted can't. to. But you have to understand that some fans are going to go, no, that, that's not been built up. It's just they made a challenge, and then the other team accepted, and that's not like a big build to a match. So that's what I'm saying. I'm calling it down Granny's memory lane. Are you oh. reading from your memoirs? Yes. No, no, okay. no. That's past. Oh, okay. This yeah, is new stuff. This is more up to date, you know. I'm I more... see. Okay, this is the more recent stuff. Yeah, new old stuff. I just no, said. No, no, okay. no, no. <laughs> the <laughs> New Testament. Everyone, let her go. We lived on a farm ten miles east of Baker. More and... recent, you say? <laughs> I was going to say this isn't new. No, this is old. It's old. Okay. Okay. Who said new? I didn't say new. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're just going to be quiet. And you, Am I out of my you, mind? No, yes, we're all out of our minds. <laughs> now I'm upset. <laughs> no, stop. <laughs> I'll, I, I'm finding Vinny. Vinny, you're being fined a hundred dollars. No. It was Martels and Hebes. Hebes. Martel. <laughs> the Hebes. The Hebes. And the Hebes only had one daughter named Alice. <laughs> yeah. What's so funny about the name? The Hebes. The daughter Alice. Uh, she knew how to yodel, and she was what <laughs> what she'd call nowadays a rebel. The yodeling rebel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granny, if I may interrupt, what did they call her back then? Alice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I wasn't going to like this segment, Granny? <laughs> this is the best segment we've had on the show in years. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.